99 FM, good morning if you've just joined us, you have joined us at the most obtune time because I'm so excited and it's just oozing with anticipation as I was telling you earlier on that guy. I love business women and I love women that just seem to have just come in their own fullness so this is why I am just turned to the max. Royal Hustlers, we're getting to know um, CEO of One Economy Foundation, where you are going yet. She is the 2019 winner of the Community and Government Award at the Namibian Business Woman of the Year Award. And she is here on 99 FM on the ignition. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm well, thank you. How are you? I'm, I'm so good. I'm so good. So Royal Hustlers, we just get to know, not even the hustlers, but you know, the people that have really stepped into their own, which is what we love, especially also in terms of business, because most GDP and money things. And things. <laughs> <laughs> so let's start there. Oh, please tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, my name is Wayo Rofisa Nakwenye. Um, born and bred in Ventuk, Namibia. Um, where can I start? So, in terms of my hustling, mm. I think let's get straight to the hustling. Yes. Um, I think I've always had an entrepreneurial mindset, mm -hmm. and I studied at the University of Cape Town. I'm not sure if you've ever heard of Marcel's frozen yogurt. No? Mm. Okay. So, you've only heard of Waka Bear. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, in Cape Town or oh, South Africa, um, Marcel's is a very popular frozen yogurt brand. Mm. And when I came back from Cape Town, I realized we don't have Marcel's here. Mm. So why not? Because that's what I used to treat, reward myself well, with yes. um, after assignments and exams. So I called up Marcel's mm. and I asked them, would you be interested in coming to Namibia? Mm. And they said, well, we actually spoke about it and we're actually keen. Yeah. So let's have the discussion. So we went back and forth and eventually they gave me the franchise license mm. to um, bring Marcel's to Namibia, which was a first for them and a obviously a first for mm -hmm. me. Yeah. Um, so Marcel started here around 2013. I had quit my full-time job to pursue Marcel's full-time. Oh, wow. Yes, a big leap of faith. Huge. Yes. <laughs> and I know a lot of people say that you should, if you want to be a serious entrepreneur, yes. you shouldn't have a full-time job. You should uh -huh. give yourself fully to hustle. your... But I yeah. kind of feel like, wait it out a little. Yes. I learned a lot in that lesson, um, in that leap of faith. Um, so yes, I took a leap of faith. I started Marcel. We first started a distribution line mm -hmm. to introduce Namibia to Marcel. Mm -hmm. So we first sold it in shops. Okay. Um, so it, it was really humble beginnings. I would drive around with my vehicle, not a frozen vehicle, drive around with it, pack it full of um, frozen yogurt, yeah. deliver it shop by shop, yeah. uh, made good friends, uh, built relationships with retailers. Mm -hmm. It was a very good experience. Mm -hmm. And then in 2015, uh, 2016 April, sorry, we were ready to start the actual uh, shop, so the little kiosk where you get the frozen yogurt with the toppings, etc. That's what they're really known for. Yeah. So we started with that. It was a struggle at first, no mall. Those days it was really difficult to get into malls. Mm. Now it's they are begging you to, to come, come in. in. Yeah. Um, but back then it was really difficult and I really had to think outside the box, yeah. which I did. So because I built this relationship with my retailers, I approached Pick and Pay and I approached Spa and I said, look, you've got a lot of floor space mm -hmm. um, that you're not using. Can I set up a shop inside your shop? Okay. And they thought about it. Spa was keen, Pick and Pay was keen, but Pick and Pay um, went for it first. Okay. So we opened up inside, um, we built a little 12, 12 by 12 square meter shop inside Pick and Pay at, um, in Kleine Cooper at the Lifestyle Center. Yeah. Yes, and we started trading and we did really, really well. Um, but eventually I learned the lesson that the first three years your business cannot carry you. Made a few rookie mistakes and um, the, sh the business itself would just became too expensive mm -hmm. to continue because of the lack of infrastructure. I had to use third parties for everything, for storage, yeah. for, for transport. Yes. for. So eventually um, I had to close shop 
and go back to full-time yes. um, business but that opened up the door to the One Economy Foundation yes. which I am grateful for so I have zero regrets yeah. I've learned a lot and I would do it again if I could. Now before we come to the to, to one economy, I just want to touch on because you mentioned that you know you never went the side hustle route. You completely went from I'm leaving this nine to five and diving straight into yes. to what I want to do. I want to understand the mindset behind that, why you didn't you particularly did not go the the you know the 60-40 split or the 70-30 split that you, you felt that it was necessary for you to completely focus on on myself. It was it was a couple of things. Mm. Um, passion. Yeah. I was very passionate about the idea. The vision was strong for me, and I felt I wouldn't be able to give it my all if I um, stayed with the eight to five. Yeah. And also, it wouldn't be fair to my eight to five job because I would probably be doing some of what I should be doing for myself yeah. during my eight to five. So I really had to make that decision um, of Am I going to put everything into this and push it so that others can also believe in it um, or am I going to give it half half yeah. um, so looking back and going forward if I had to do it again I would probably go 100% again okay but I would just do better homework <laughs> I was about to come there because there's there's no failure. There's just lessons. Yes. So what yes. lessons did you learn from from your from your journey with myself? So many. Um, the first one is that I've got what it takes. Hey. I think, uh, <laughs> I think that it was it was character self development. Mm. You know, very character building experience. Yeah. Um, secondly, that money isn't everything for a business um, mm -hmm. yes and that's probably the last thing you need along the the, the journey um, the first thing would be to self train yourself so educate yourself mm -hmm. on this industry um, go for as many trainings as you possibly can find a mentor mm -hmm. find accountability partners if you can appoint a board appoint a board mm -hmm. Um, just somebody to keep you accountable because when you're in it alone you sort of start to cut corners uh -huh. because there's nobody you need to answer to and if if your business model is bulletproof and um, then any bank would bank you right so money isn't really the first thing you need I think when I approached it I thought money was all I needed Exactly. And what I've learned is no. And and like Busi uh, Tim Bayo says, if you want to own a chicken farm, start by selling eggs. Um, so I I believe in that because yeah. of my experience. So I would have started. I would have maybe um, chilled on the distribution a little longer mm -hmm. while I really make sure that the market is ready for the the, the kiosk. Um, so yeah. And now here we are with the Money yes. Economy Foundation. Yes. Which is? And you won't believe it. Yeah. My, um, the first lady, she's the founder and chairperson of the One Economy Foundation. It's a NGO um, that really takes a multidisciplinary approach to social inequality, mm -hmm. developing programs that address social inequality in education, entrepreneurship, um, sexual and gender based violence, full spectrum. And when she approached me for One Economy, she said, um, because you failed so dismally, I was like, <laughs> this is where we're going to start. Thanks. I feel so much better about myself. I feel appreciated. <laughs> yes. Because you failed so dismally, I feel there's a lot of experience and lesson yeah. that you can impart um, to others. And I think I would, I mean, it's value that you can bring to the foundation. Mm -hmm. So I'd love to have you on the team. And that, once again, um, really shifted my mindset about my experience and gave me the confidence to take on that challenge. Mm -hmm. Because she didn't see it as failure, she yeah. saw it as lesson, she saw it as experience. Yeah. And if I see it that way, then surely there's a bright future in it. And what excites you about the foundation? What excites me the most is that um, potential and people are at its core mm -hmm. and that's what motivates me in general yeah um, 
people are at the core of what the One Economy Foundation is about. And who, I mean, our programs aren't modeled to suit so much the need or just the need. And um, it's actually modeled to suit the person. So we, we frame it around the beneficiaries. Um, and that's why we're flexible in, in our modeling. And even with COVID, we were able to adapt because of that flexibility. So people definitely uh, motivate me and energize me. I'm the kind of person where if you want to get me out of bed, just tell me how many people there'll be, yes. who will be there, <laughs> <laughs> and I'll be up. And then potential. Um, I think in the same vein where if you look at our team, many of us don't necessarily come from a history of running organizations. I've never been a CEO of an NGO, mm -hmm. um, but yet our potential was seen. Yeah. And because of that potential, we've actually managed to manifest that. Mm -hmm. And it's the same in our programs. We see potential in our beneficiaries. Mm -hmm. We see potential in things in Namibia being able to change. Mm -hmm. And because of that, we bring passion, we bring drive, it gives us a sense of purpose. And and that's why I think we're doing so well, is that it's people-centered and um, potential-centered. And what's the one project that stands out for you? Well, I'm going to be biased and say <laughs> <laughs> all programs under my pillar, which I is see. the entrepreneurship pillar. Oh, yes. Um, but they really do stand out for me personally because of my journey, because of my interests, mm -hmm. um, and also, because of the beneficiaries we have, they are absolutely amazing people. Mm -hmm. And they actually inspire us to get up every day because you see the impact of your work. Yeah. And I think it's very, it's seldom that somebody gets to see what they do, the reward of what they do. You know, most people um, aren't in that position. They push paper and they don't know what the end result, it actually is. Their, their contribution towards that end result is. Yeah. But here we get to see life changed every day. Mm -hmm. And my beneficiaries empower me to see, um, to see greatness in the small little things. You won't believe it. When I drive through Havana or I go see them, because we, we work with grassroots entrepreneurs, and when I have to do my site visits just to check up on them, see how their businesses are doing, and I drive through those areas, I am so inspired. I feel like starting a business again. Yeah. Because they do the most with the least. But, yeah. Yes, and it works. And then you come to this side of Independence Avenue and everything is so complicated, yeah. you know, and it doesn't have to be. And that really, really motivates and inspires. So that is my favorite program. Um, it's where we give collateral funding to um, micro grassroots entrepreneurs who can't access funding from a bank. And we also empower them with what we call the three C's, so capital, confidence, and the character. You had me at confidence. <laughs> you you had me there. Because you like you were saying capital money. You, you, you can give me ten thousand, but if I am not in the right space and mindset mm -hmm. for okay. it, then yes. it's just going to go down the drain. Yes. Okay. And initially we did start by giving in entrepreneurs money mm -hmm. and then training. Mm -hmm. And then we saw that it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. So we changed the model. Yeah. And we now train them. So yeah. you don't necessarily qualify for funding, you mm -hmm. first qualify for training. Yes. And based on your performance in the training, you then qualify for funding. Mm -hmm. So we've now taken that approach because we're seeing that it's really capacity yeah. that, that's lacking. All right. Um, so now, looking at the entrepreneurial space, especially amongst the youth, what are we, or even the grassroots that you're working with, what are they doing right? And what can we do to get us to that next level? What are what the, give me good news first. <laughs> what, what the youth is doing? Yeah, right? what are we doing right as entrepreneurs? Okay, well, I like the fact that you're going towards youth because then I can also tell you that the Wine Economy Foundation is taking a new direction. Mm. So for our next five years, we are taking a youth-focused direction. Mm. <laughs> and um, But not with me at the helm. Okay. It will be Mr. Sam Mandela who told okay. me. And we will be both instant. We have a program called the Be Free Movement. I don't know if you've ever heard mm -hmm. of it, um, which really be started off with just engaging youth on frank, open, non judgmental conversations. Yeah. So that has been one of our most our flagship programs. 
and as a result we're now institutionalizing the program and okay. we're building a multi-purpose youth center in Garadura close to or right opposite from the multi-purpose youth center, center that's yeah. already there um, and this one will also just like all our programs currently have an innovative multidisciplinary approach okay. and we're going to integrate our entrepreneurship education etc into the center mm. so we'll have different hubs um, so we'll have an innovation hub skills development hub a medical hub mm. so that youth can access um, health services um, and so what I see from an entrepreneurial perspective that youth is doing right is that they're pushing the innovation on them. Okay. So that is quite exciting. So they're, they're daring to enter the tech space. Mm. They're daring to enter um, the social enterprise space. So they're actually coming up with solutions mm. that impact society mm -hmm. for the better. Mm -hmm. um, and I think those are the sort of initiatives that are really that have the potential to put Namibia on the map. Yeah. yeah, because if you look at programs, international platforms that offer funding or offer opportunities, they're looking for innovation, mm -hmm. they're looking for social impact. Um, social enterprise is now the buzzword, yes. you know. And social producers for, for Yes. For social <laughs> okay, so in that aspect, I think that's where the youth are really pioneering. Yeah. Um, so what then do we, what, what what extra do we need to get us to that next level? I think the extra is is a collective effort. Okay. So I think what we then need to do from a from a structural perspective or point of view is to put in place what they would need to in order to make a success of that. Do you okay. understand? So a lot of our structures are still very traditional. They still support very traditional forms of business. Mm -hmm. Even if you look at funding. Yes. Funding, business when you come with a tech idea, which is a high risk idea, yes. you know, your, your traditional funding um, tools mm -hmm. don't really support a high risk model. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a collective effort of, and I think everything starts with dialogue. So to start having that dialogue and see, okay, where are the gaps? Because yeah. if you look for the, past four years that I've been with the One Economy, they've been pushing manufacturing, right? And export, export, export. Uh, make indigenous products, get them on the shelf, yes. send them out. I mean, how many essential oils uh, products have you seen? There's so many popping mm -hmm. up. But what used to be a problem was barcoding. Mm -hmm. So if I produce this product, I would have to send my, uh, I would get have to get barcoding from South Africa, which yes. is an expensive exercise. Yes. And um, we used to really, it used to be my favorite example to use on platforms. But now recently, the Namibia Trade Forum introduced barcoding in Namibia. Oh, nice. Well done, Stacey Pinto. <laughs> so, <laughs> so now I need to come up with a new example because that's fixed now. Yeah. Um, so now, you know, it's a, it really opens the doors for local producers mm -hmm. um, when we have that barcoding in place because it's, some, it's a requirement internationally, even locally. Mm -hmm. So the same would now apply for the tech space, the innovate, the social um, uh, enterprise space. We need to now put in place structures mm -hmm. that support that model of business. I think that's the next step. But it's a collaborative, uh, it's a collective effort, and it's going to require dialogue at first to understand it. But I feel it is happening already. You have initiatives like Startup Namibia by yes. GIZ. So I think we are getting there. Mm, yeah. Yes, and One Economy through the Project Be Free, which is the center, will also add its two cents to that, will also contribute its two cents to that development. Well, we're very excited. As the youth know, like, oh, we're going to be having our own little gun section in, in, in One Economy. <laughs> we're very excited about yes. it. So, uh, finally, how, how does one then become a part of One Economy? Do I need to just check things out on the website and have all of the information there? Are you on social media? and things and things. Yes, we are definitely on social media. We are on um, Twitter and mm -hmm. Facebook. Our Twitter handle is at one underscore Namibia and our Facebook account is One Namibia Foundation, I mean One Economy Foundation. And we also on Inst, we just recently um, started with Instagram. We're still sort of testing it out. Yeah. 
um, because you can't be youth and not have Instagram, right? <laughs> <laughs> We're also busy with YouTube, so we're really building our social media yeah. profile. Mm -hmm. And soon we will be launching our website. Okay. So if you want to get involved, you can um, either connect with us via our social media okay. pages or contact our offices at 061-270-7806 or email us at admin at oneeconomy.org. The one is a digit, mm -hmm. not the word. Okay. Um, yes. Yeah. And we'd be happy to, to to receive your request and process it and see exactly where the fit would be. Oh, that's beautiful. Thank you so much for coming. I really appreciate this. And I really appreciate to know that we are being supported as not only the Namibian youth in entrepreneurship, but entrepreneurs in general. So yes. we build... Because Namibia, because Namibia is, we are, the potential. Yes. We're not even at the potential now. We're like, exactly. we're making things happen. We're doing the things that the youth would say. <laughs> it's to be done. <laughs> no, we're very excited. We're very, we, we truly believe um, we're going to do great things through the center with the youth at the helm of it. And, I mean, um, Sam is 26 years old. Imagine, and he'll be leading it. Mm. He's taking over from me, so yeah. I'll be stepping down yeah. and, and leaving the One Economy Foundation, but in very capable hands. Mm. And um, our team, majority of them now is is 26, between 26 and 32, 31. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a very young team. Um, so we, we really think we're going to do great things through that center, and we're excited. and. We call all youth on board to participate. There's something for everyone. everyone. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for having me. And that was why you're playing the CEO of One Economy Foundation. And if you're thinking, oh, I didn't catch that, see, I didn't catch that, Twitter at one underscore Namibia. On Facebook, it's One Economy Foundation. Website soon to come, Instagram, so check them out. Otherwise, here's the number again 061 270 that's 061-270-7806. And you can furthermore email them, admin at one, the number, economyfoundation.org. Net admin, one, the number, economyfoundation.org.